Welcome to the Project Finance Modeling for Renewables course. In this lesson, we will discuss how wind and solar resources are measured. Wind resource is defined as wind speed at the intended site of installation of the wind turbines that results in energy generation. Similarly, the solar resource is solar radiation conditions at the site where solar panels will be installed. In order to develop future energy production for wind or solar farms, Renewable resource assessments are done. Typically, this wind or solar resource assessment begins with prospecting the available data, such as wind or resource maps, various available measurements from existing nearby wind or solar farms, and other publicly available information. The purpose of prospecting is a preliminary selection of the site for wind turbine or solar panel installations. At the second stage, the developer measures the wind speed or solar radiation at the site, typically for at least one year. Data is also collected from nearby long-term reference stations, such as airports or weather stations for wind projects. Once the wind speed or solar radiation data is obtained, various calculations have to be performed to estimate the future energy production. Let's review the wind measurement data. Here, we have an hourly wind measurement data for one year. On the vertical axis, wind speed, measured in meters per second is given, and horizontal axis measures time in hours. Note how volatile wind speed is. It varies from zero to 26 meters per second. The next step is to create a histogram from the wind speed. Here, on the vertical axis, we have the number of hours and the horizontal axis measures the wind speed. You can see that most of the wind is happening between two and 10 meters per second. Once wind data is ready, Wind engineers combine wind data with wind turbine's S-curve, or power curve. S-curve measures electrical energy output at different wind speeds. Here, on the vertical axis, power generation capacity in kilowatts, and on the horizontal axis, you have wind speed in meters per second. First, note that there's no energy output at wind speeds between zero and three meters per second. The wind turbine starts energy production at a wind speed of three meters per second. This point is known as cut in power. At speeds above three meters per second, the power output rises until the wind speed reaches 11 meters per second. At 11 meters per second, the power output reaches its maximum level of 1,815 kilowatts. This point is known as rated power. Remember how in the previous lesson, we talked about rated or nameplate capacity, which represents maximum potential energy that wind turbines can generate? So, the rated power on the power curve represents this maximum potential energy that wind turbines can generate. Finally, at wind speed above 20 meters per second, the rotor stops in order to prevent damage. This point is known as cutout power. Cut in, cut out, and rated power depend on the turbine and turbine manufacturer. The next step is to combine wind pattern data and wind turbine S curves to model forecast energy output over time. This is typically done using Monte Carlo simulation, which yields a gross generation of the project. Once the gross generation is available, the numbers are adjusted for the losses, such as downtime for maintenance, that we have discussed in the previous lesson, and Monte Carlo simulation is rerun in order to arrive at the net energy generation. Then, after that, the probabilistic distribution is obtained, which is typically a bell curve. The bell curve is used to generate different energy production profiles, and particularly for calculating probabilities of exceedance. A probability of exceedance in renewable energy indicates the annual energy production level that is exceeded with a certain probability. Here, we have a bell curve for a wind farm with different annual energy production profiles. The average annual energy production is forecasted to be 220 gigawatt hours. This average value corresponds to P50 value on the bell curve, which has a probability of exceedance of 50%. So, a probability of exceedance of 50% or P50 means there is a 50% chance that annual energy production level of 220 gigawatt hours will be exceeded and 50% chance that annual energy production level will be less than 220 gigawatt hours. A more conservative probability of exceedance would be P90, which corresponds to annual energy production of 160 gigawatt hours. P90 means that there is a 90% chance that annual energy production level of 160 gigawatt hours will be exceeded, and only 10% chance that annual energy production level 
will be less than 160 gigawatt hours. The higher the chance that a certain level of production will be exceeded, the lower the production number. P-value can be thought of as how confident you can be that the generation over the period will exceed a given value. Now, let's consider wind speed variability for hourly data for one year period and average monthly data for a 10 year period. You can see that wind speed data for the 10 year period is less volatile compared to hourly data for one year. On the graph with hourly data, the wind speed oscillates between zero and 26, while on the graph with monthly data, the wind speed fluctuates between four and 12 meters per second. The one year and 10 year data generate their own probabilistic distributions and probabilities of exceedance. One year data generates a bell curve that is wide and reflects wide fluctuation in the wind speed movement, while 10 year data generates a bell curve which is narrow and reflects narrower fluctuation in the wind speed movement compared to one year data. While production levels that correspond to P50 value are similar, higher P values, such as P90, will have different production levels. P90 for one year data is always lower than P90 for 10 year data, and therefore, P90 for one year data is considered to be a conservative, worst case scenario, while P50 is considered to be a base case scenario. You will often hear investors, bankers, and engineers discussing one year P90 or 10 year P50, and now you know what it means. Solar projects follow a similar process to establish the energy generation profile, except that there is significant data already available and therefore, it is more predictable. The variability of solar radiation is also significantly narrower than the variability of wind speed. Let's review a graph of capacity factors for solar and wind. The first graph shows the average capacity factor, colored black, and its variability, colored brown, for solar projects. Compare this to graph number two, which shows capacity factor variability for wind project colored blue. You can see how wide the wind project's variability is compared to solar. This again results in solar energy generation being more predictable than energy generation for wind projects. The bell curve for wind will be wider and the bell curve for solar projects will be narrower, reflecting in higher uncertainties in wind energy generation forecast. So to summarize, one year P90 energy production profile means the most conservative, worst case scenario energy production profile and P50 means the base case energy production profile. 